O'Keefe, my man. It's all, it's, all right. it's always good to talk to you, dude. It's always good to talk to you. I'm excited. It's uh, me, me too, man. It's been a while. Um, I don't know. Maybe the last time we talked, the world was on fire in this space. Probably a year ago. No, it hasn't been that long, has it? It's been a year. It's been a year. It's been, today is the 11th. Uh, so exactly one year and two days ago is when Greg stepped down. And in about two weeks, it'll be a one year anniversary of him uh, announcing that they're going to sell it to Eric Rosa. Wow, that's crazy. What do you, what do you, what do you make? You know, it's been, um, it's been a long year. Yeah, it has been a really long year. It feels like it was five years ago. Uh, and at the same time, it kind of feels like it was yesterday. I was talking to a couple people and I was like kind of telling them the same thing I just told you about how it's been about a year. And they were like, oh, remember when this happened and then this happened and then this happened. I was like, stop. Like that's still, it still feels way too close. Like my heart rate is, is going up. Like my blood pressure is going up just thinking about it. So yeah, it feels like it's still, it's still like yesterday, but as much as things change, it feels like sometimes things go right back to the way they were, right? Sure it does. It, it, it's funny. We were uh, reminiscing a little the other day. I saw your post, and I was talking to Matt a little bit about it, but I remember sitting in my uh, garage for, like, you know, 14 hours a day, you know, having calls with different people, trying to figure out which way I was up with this thing and doing workouts in between. I got really fit through that whole thing because it was like the stress reliever was hop on the bike, you know, all right, you'll be okay. You know, but yeah, I mean, things are um, fortunately in, in, in a lot of positive ways back to normal, you know, um, you know, there's still some stuff going on, but you know, we've had an event last weekend and, you know, I've been to some sporting events and I get a coffee without my mask on, um, you know, people are competing and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun to be back. And it's uh, with a lot of great perspective from last year, there's a lot more gratitude, at least in my, in my body that, um, that I possess from the experience over the last 18 months, because I will not take for granted the normalcy that, that we, we come to sort of take for granted um, through what we went through the last year, for sure. Yeah. It's not just, you know, it's not just the whole CrossFit thing because CrossFit itself had its own wild, you know, I mean, just trial by fire, I guess, last summer, but just the whole world is starting to feel a little bit more normal, like the way we want it to be, the way we expected it to be. And, and hopefully the sort of experience that we have over the past like a uh, year and a half or so has just been an aberration. Like it does not become the norm because if that became the norm, that would be miserably bad for everybody. I don't know, man. It, it felt for a while like that was like the new life, you know, that was the way things were going to work. Um, I agree. Like that would have been a, a very unfortunate way to proceed through the rest of our lives, you know. Um, but I, I do, I, you know, it's not like to spin positive on things, but, you know, you got to take something positive out of experiences like that. And certainly for me, um, it was good perspective that, you know, we, we, we get pretty uh, locked into our pace and you know, not necessarily being, you know, present in moments for me, at least. And, um, you know, being back last week was a perfect one for me. I just, you know, really uh, enjoyed, you know, being back with a lot of great people that, you know, we've done a lot of work with over the years and athletes and, you know, them being able to do things the way they had come to, you know, want to do them and compete on a floor. And I had a really good week last it was really fun it was very rewarding because it's been a long haul so thankfully we are back you know i can go to the red sox with you know thirty six thousand people i can you know go to the bruins with you know eighteen thousand people well not anymore they're out but yeah it's um it's great it's great to be back and you know and i think um you know not only do we endure that pandemic the pandemic situation, which, you know, for some still has a bit of a tail on it, you know, uh, globally, but the CrossFit stuff has been crazy. You know, it's, um, you know, I think, you know, we're evolving and, you know, we're getting back to, you know, somewhat normal and um, things have, you know, a lot of things have gone really well. Um, so it's just been a big year. I mean, you, you're right. Like, you know, even talking about it now, it's a bit exhausting to think about, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so much that, that happened and there's so much that's still happening and still, you know, 
it still feels fresh is the thing. Even after like a year, year and a half of all of this, it still feels very fresh. Tell, tell me a little bit about Granite Games because, you know, like you you guys, uh, and by you guys, I mean Loud and Live, like you guys have been, uh, you know, making some moves in the space, trying to put, to, put together, you know, your like series of, of events. They were part of the sanctional season. The first season that you guys had an opportunity to actually run all your events, everything just got shut down before you got anything really going. And now you've, been able to like you know you moved granite games out of the fall into the summer you moved it into the semi-final season like tell me a little bit about how the event went off for you guys and what that was like to actually you know finally put a button on that and have the thing exist there uh it was first of all overall amazing you know because it had been a long haul i mean i think we acquired it you know, it was probably over two years ago, you know, and there'd been a lot of buildup and planning. We were deep in the planning phase uh, for the 20 event. And, you know, obviously we got the rug pulled out from under us. It was just great to experience it, you know, and, and, and every pocket, you know, especially with events are kind of like affiliates, you know, there's different communities, different people that are passionate about that particular event. Um, so it was really good to get to engage with, you know, everybody involved in that. There's a certain fan that attends um, the brands that there are brands that love certain events more than, than others. And there's certainly the most important piece that the volunteer core is, you know, very different per event, you know, and it was, so it was um, you know, we have some consistency, but it was really cool to get to meet all these people and see the passion they have and how happy they were to be back. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it was a great, you know, experience and, and opportunity to be back. It, it wasn't necessarily the way Granite Games always looks. You know, it wasn't, you know, a mass participation event, which is truly what, the, you know, the, you know, fabric of that event really is, you know, uh, a lot of different divisions, a lot like Wadapalooza, just in a different, you know, brand and format. Um, so it was a little, a little bit of a bummer that, you know, we probably, hindsight being 2020 with, you know, with the veil being lifted, could have maybe done more. But, you know, knowing what we knew two months prior, we really couldn't plan for it, you know. Um, but the venue is amazing. Um, I think we found a really cool home for the future uh, and we can expand upon it there. Um, anybody who attended was really blown away. It was it was a it was a nice step forward. Um, you know, the, the Vikings were incredible partners. I mean, players came out. The GM spent eight hours there one day just like, you know, oh, I loved it. You know, the CFO came, um, they really, you know, they really hosted us and, uh, you know, showed us, you know, why that would be a great place for us to move forward. But overall, great. Honestly, it's um, it's very rewarding personally, too. Like I've been a, you know, a fan, a brand at well, Granite Games. I've coached Matt there. Like, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of shown up um, in every way, shape or form, kind of like my experience with a lot of blues. So it was a, it was a rewarding experience to be on the operations side and, bring something cool to life and get a lot of great feedback about the experience we created and, and the job we did with, you know, all facets of a competition. So it was fun. I mean, I, I, I watched, uh, I watched more of the grand games than I watched of any of the other events that went on over the past couple weekends. Um, I, I was like, it's no, there's no real like reason behind that other than I had interviewed a bunch of the athletes, like more of the athletes leading up to it. And I also just happened to have more time. Um, and it was, it went off really well. Like I, 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 I like that you guys were pretty fluid, like being able to pivot and make some changes to scheduling because of the weather, you know, just got way too hot out there. And then on Sunday you saw just how brutal that would have been if they had to do that all weekend long. Um, but overall, like I, I thought the event went off without hitch. I really enjoyed the way that it, it, it pulled itself together. The competition seemed pretty good as well. And, you know, it, it felt, um, it felt familiar to Granite Games, like having been there so many times in the past, like five years, six years, but it also felt like it had been like elevated in a really, really cool way as well. So whatever it is that you guys did, whatever like little secret sauce, like whatever secret uh, spices you threw in there, it, it seemed to work out. It seemed to, to get itself in, into where it needed to be to be semifinal, you know? Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, our team's amazing, you know, led by Dylan Malitsky, you know, he, um, He's got a lot of great experience with a lot of Palooza, the games. I mean, he's as good as anyone in this business. And, um, you know, he did, a, you know, he brings a lot of that to life, um, you know, in our, in our entire team at Loud Live and the extension with the volunteers and our production partners, frameworks. 
these guys did a great job. I mean, it looks so good on TV, crisp. Um, you know, there's always things that we look at that we can do better, which is why I think we're good at what we do. And, and um, there's some things that, you know, we want to do better next time. And I think, you know, the programming ended up working out really well. You know, even Dylan, who's, you know, in charge of that, is very critical of himself. I was a little worried about some of the time domains. But, you know, honestly, if we had done – uh, a work we, we if we had had a workout that was 15 minutes long it would it would have failed um, we saw it in some of the team workouts like the way the team workouts were tested comparatively to what the best teams in the world did them at is crazy like we've had you know it's hard to find games level testers sometimes right and when we tested those workouts with people that are probably a rung below people on that field they were finishing workouts that these these athletes weren't because of the heat you know, and so, you know, getting the athletes off the field um, in five, you know, in under 10 minutes, you know, these five to seven minutes and shorter time dom domains really worked out. And, and what most importantly, I think, is the right people qualified for the games. There wasn't a fluke or um, we didn't produce, a, you know, a certain athlete because of that. I think, you know, it was a good test. Um, and so the programming held up. I mean, it was hot. Like that's some kind of heat that I hadn't experienced in my life over a course of time like that. And I'm really proud of how the team handled, you know, the, the pivot on Saturday. I mean, so, you know, we didn't really get a lot of bad feedback on that. I think some people, maybe spectators, fans were a little chippy about, you know, the scheduling, but, you know, in the end, our North has to be our people, athletes and volunteers are standing on that field and the field was 150 degrees at, at like one o'clock, two o'clock. Right you know, 150, not 15, 50, the dollar was 170 degrees, the, the padding that goes under the rig. So it was like, you know, we knew that we were kind of locked in on Sunday because of scheduling people's travel. Like so there was just too many things that we couldn't navigate two, two days of that, three days of that would have been a disaster. We would have, you know, seen a very remedial um, result from a lot of people and it would have maybe produced, you know, a different outcome. So I'm proud of it. It's, um, it's hard to be like, you know, we crush that on anything we do because you always see things micro that maybe people on the outside don't, uh, but we crush that. Like, I think we really brought something cool to life and I, I couldn't be prouder of the people that are involved. Tell me about the process it took for you guys to become a semifinal, because I think that's something that the, like nobody has any clarity into that. And I, I remember like early on, so like my our, our, my guy Ryan, my producer Ryan, helped schedule this. And I remember the first thing I told him when he when he started doing this for me was like, I need to talk to one of the event organizers, preferably O'Keefe, because he's organizing like forty percent of them or whatever, right? So it's like let's get let's get someone in there to actually shed some light on this process because we didn't hear anything for a long time. There's no real clarity as to like what the relationship is between you guys and and HQ. You know, I'm very curious. Like, give me give me what you can. Obviously, I know you're you're you know, there's probably some contractual obligations that you can't speak to, but I, I just want to know what that process was like and what the relationship is like. Yeah, and I think they'd want you all to know. You know, certainly because it's you know the intention is for it to be a long term partnership, right? And so. You know, this year is probably a unique year is the best way to, to sort of classify it is um, in, a, in a good way that, you know, um, the way we worked together on, you know, getting together on how to partner this year was just to get through this year, you know, and, and, and one of those things was, you know, when we were doing, when we started sort of talking about these things, remember, it's like December and January, probably, right? And, you know, the really... Um, the perspective at that point was like, nobody's going to do a live competition. Like, you know, we don't like vaccines look so far out and, you know, how do we just, you know, get through this year together, support each other, you know, you know, how do we add some things that we're strong at to help you and, and you to help us. Right. And so that's sort of like, you know, a very high line, you know, perspective on the way the partnership worked this year and it worked, you know, and, and, and the, um, from a operations perspective, and like how a competition runs they're uh, very hands-off um you know and very intent on um each you know brand or event you know bringing to life a competition that's very true to the brand or you know what it was formerly um you know we would um we 
you know, asked a lot of questions because I think, you know, I, I'm always curious. Like, I think they do a lot of things great. I think we do a lot of things great. And, you know, it was an opportunity to really have been partnered really for the first time and, and get a little bit of a, you know, look into maybe some of the things operationally that I would geek out on, you know, like, you know, how do you go about an EAP an emergency action, action plan? Like, how do you, um, you know, how do you think a, a balanced test is put together? Like things like that. And they were, they were really good about that stuff. Um, you know, they, did, they were very intent on not wanting to be involved in the programming, but, you know, having us send it to them and then giving us some perspective if needed. But I'll tell you, like, I don't know how it went for the other event organizers with their programming, but ours was just thumbs up, you know, like they didn't um, say, yeah, no, you don't have this or, you know, um, you, didn't, you know, you could have done this. And Dave was there at Granite Games. And um, I think, you know, in a really good way, um, spent some time with Dylan to give him his perspective on some things he thought even the day he was there, we could have done differently that would have looked better. You know, he's very visual and, you know, he's, um, he brings a lot of the, you know, the art of the, the competition together, I think for CrossFit. And, um, you know, he has some good perspective, you know, some things we might look at differently moving forward, especially on how to use a football field, right? Like he's done that, you know? Um, but yeah, overall, it's, um, you know, it'll be interesting, you know, I'm excited to sit down and talk about what the future looks like. You know, I think the, the experience through Granite Games is like, you know, um, I think people love this format, right? You know, my perspective is I would like to see some more consistency across the events, um, which, you know, wasn't necessarily discouraged by any stretch by them. I think we had a lot of autonomy in that. I think it was hard to put together this year. But, you know, one of my number one feedbacks would be like, I, I mean, in a perfect world, I think all the workouts should be the same is my perspective. But I don't think that's necessarily something that will happen. And I, it might be discouraged. I don't know. But there should be some consistency. I think the people um, in this that, that view this sport and are fans of this sport love the world records, they love the measuring sticks. Um, so I think, you know, as, as leaders in, in this side of it, in the semifinal space, I, I would want to uh, really push for that next year. We tried this year. Um, you know, I think a lot of us had snatch on there and we tried to do it after watching the Mac a little like the Mac so that there could be some more consistency and talk around that. But I'd love to see some workouts, you know, uh, maybe it's one a day, maybe it's a full day, um, you know, but again, it's, um, you know, it's a, um, you know, it's a partnership, um, but they're very hands off with how we run our competition, which I was interested to see. I didn't know how that would go and in, 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 in a positive way, you know. Um, and we did some partnerships together. Um, we activated some of their brands and, and, and them us, and, you know, ours. So um, I, I'm excited to see how it evolves. Do you have, uh, do you guys have like a, a group text, like a group WhatsApp for all the semifinal organizers? And you're just like, hey, what are you guys doing this weekend? Okay, cool. What does this look like? Let's, why don't we try doing this together or whatever? Or is it very much, because, you know, maybe me people don't don't necessarily know this, but the way that the, sanctional system worked is there was a lot of like active discouragement of the sanctionals working together to sure. do that sort of thing so is that different now or is that kind of where things are are still at no that's different and i agree because i've experienced both right um and you know you know we had five sanctionals so we were able to sort of collaborate with ourselves you know around how different things would look but we also had friends that we're a very tight group is how I would classify that. Um, a lot of those event organizers work our event at Wadapalooza. So there's a, there's a relationship that, you know, Wilson, who runs the Mac, is a stage manager at Wadapalooza, you know. Um, for instance, you know, Robin does media at Wadapalooza. He owns the low and throw, throw down, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the answer is yes. We're on a WhatsApp. We're on an email together. And there's a lot of conversations that go on between all, all of us um and, and it's great honestly because you know what, what a peer group to have you know and it's it's a big deal like we're you know what we um are all most concerned with is you know the athletes having a great experience the volunteers having a great experience like you know us putting on a really good competition that's a proper test and and to have people to bounce those things off of, it's huge so the the collaboration uh component is not discouraged anymore um you know, it's, uh, there's, it, it wasn't like, you know, promoted, like, hey, go collaborate. But, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a free market system. Like people um, sort of do as they wish. And 
um, we all choose to, to be very aligned. You know, Luke and, and Wilson from the Mac again, being another North American event, we, we, we stayed really close. You know, we talked a lot, you know, about whether we would program certain things together, got a lot of respect for them and them us, you know, Lexi up in Canada, the same. So, um, there's a lot of alignment in that group. It's a really good group of people. Um, and, you know, it's been really fun to be able to have, you know, them to bounce ideas off and work together. So, yeah, that's that's a lot different. That's good. That's good to hear. I mean, one of the things that also kind of defined the sanctional, like the two seasons that we had was churn and movement, right? So, like, events would exist, then drop out, and a new event would come in, and then more events would be added. And I know that this this uh, semifinals is constructed over, you know, how many people are competing in what continent, and that's how they decide how many events are there are and how many qualifiers there are. Uh, do you have any idea or insight as to how stable the the roster of semifinals is going to be, or, or whether there's going to be a lot of like ups and downs in terms of who's who's participating, what events they are? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think, you know, um, I think that was sort of a big part of what we talked on the front end as to what the, some of the North was in terms of how we structured it this year, right? It was like, we knew it was going to be a tough year for everybody. You know, how do we support each other and get us, you know, to what, you know, what normal would look like, you know, because that's a, you know, that's a more, you know, you know, um, conducive you know platform for measurement I, I think everybody has um had a really good experience thus far you know i don't you know, i haven't had anybody say wow well, i got killed or like you know that didn't work or um and you know those that were going to struggle the most i think with you know being able to operate financially properly um ended up having to pivot to virtual anyway right and that being the reason is just it wasn't you know the arithmetic wasn't adding up you know you could have possibly like for instance run a competition um, on a floor in like you know the Netherlands maybe but you aren't going to be able to have spectators you know which is a big component eyeballs you know people showing up to being able to drive partnership and revenue to support the event I mean they, you know these things um, you know I think you know I, and I, I look back at like other sports that I've studied in my past you know there's an evolution here and we're all sort of you know invested in this future opportunity but it's not a get rich scenario at this point. It's really a sustain, you know, how do we sustain and most importantly, stabilize the market for the, 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 the athletes, the sport, right? It's like, we've been all over the place. We've changed systems, you know, new events showing up and leaving and, you know, how do we, you know, be a consistent group moving forward, which I think is what you're asking. And it, it looks to be like this core group, you know, will be able to really, um, take that next step next year and still be involved. And, you know, and I'm sure they're looking to add, you know, because I think, you know, they'll grow. Um, and in this system, they built the structure they built, you know, it would warrant more events because they would want more people to qualify, you know, you know, I think there's some micro there, like, you know, I think you asked a little bit about it, but it's like choice of events, um, you know, and it's not complaints. It's just critique. I think that, um, you know, how, um, they balance events, I think is, it should be an, there should be an evolution there. I think, you know, um, just having athletes choose where they want to go could, you know, create an imbalance, you know? Um, and I think they solve some of that with this sort of last chance qualifier, but I still think you could find, you know, scenarios that don't work out tremendously well sometimes with, with the way you go about that. But again, you know, I know those are conversations that there's openness to, because I think we want to get better. You know, we, you know, I'd love to see a selection show, you know, like, the NCAA where they're just like popping people up and, you know, but, um, you know, I think athletes having input is a really cool thing. And, you know, I think, you know, we want that to evolve too. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, where they compete, you know, maybe that's not an area you really need to give a ton of input into. It's just like, Hey, we're going to balance you. You're going to be regional. Like, you know, yeah, you might have to travel to the Netherlands or, you know, you know, wherever else, you know, in your region, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we're going to put you where we think is the best, um, the best, you know, group. we're going to put the best group together. We think to, to balance it out. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I think everybody's in pretty good shape. You know, I mean, obviously we would have loved to see a lot more athletes on the floor. Um, you know, that, that, that's a bummer. Um, I just watched Katrin do, you know, a couple workouts in a gym and it's just, you know, she's great at competing no matter where it is, but it's not the same, you know? And um, you know, so, you know, for them, I think, you know, those that are competing at home, I think they're very excited to be, you know, competing for a prize, but I think they're a little bummed to not be on the floor. So, 
you know, we're almost there. Um, I think the games will be very normal. You know, I think we'll fill that building up and, um, you know, that'll be a lot of the, the athletes first opportunity to do that. Yeah. Cause I was just talking to Daniel Brandon yesterday and she was saying, you know, she's competing at West coast next weekend. And it's going to be the first competition she's done in person since January of 20 at mayhem. And so for an athlete like Katrin or well, Katrin competed top five at the games, but there'll be some athletes that make it to the games this year who haven't competed in person in like a year and a half or almost two years. And that ends up looking really, really wild. I mean, you start talking about like ring rust at that point of like actually having in-person <laughs> competition, right? Um, oh, you, you back, back to, back to your, you know, getting shot, you know, all these, all these things you've learned over time as an athlete, like don't go out hot, you know, like don't do that. You know, you might feel like a little bit of a learning curve again. I, I agree. You know, it's still, it's interesting you know, do those that have been able to be back last year have an advantage? I think certainly like they were able to, you know, get together and there was a little more um, normalcy for, for them. Um, but it's been weird for everyone. I mean, let's face it, like the games last year was one of my most tre treasured life experiences, obviously, because Matt's winning his fifth um, and being able to go there. And it was a very unique experience to be a part of a, such a small group. Um, but it was different, you know, like it's not, I don't, I don't think how anybody that either competed or participated and wanted it to be. So we're all, you know, ready to be back. And I think last week we got to experience the opportunity. The heat hurt the crowd a little bit, you know, like there weren't a lot of people that wanted to, you know, come out and sit in hundred degree heat and watch people work out, you know? Um, so, you know, I think we'll evolve ne ne next week's going to be badass. Like there are a lot of people coming, um, worse, you know, you know, really charged up about that. And it's, it's going to look like, like, like old school CrossFit, you know, we're doing all old workouts and, you know, I, I think, um, I feel like that's going to be like one of these, you know, big moments in, in, in the seat, you know, in our comeback where people are going to be like, wow, look how full that place is. And oh, wow, I remember that workout. Like, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, in games, competitors are going to have measuring sticks if they're not there because they did those workouts, you know what I mean? So it's, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's certainly interesting, but, um, you know, we're getting there. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that you kind of have in terms of like a unique, uh, perspective on things is that you run events that are both inside and outside of the season. So how does, you know, how does like internally your team, how do you guys balance like that mindset, that concept of, okay, these are the events that like you know, we're putting on for selection to the CrossFit Games. And then these are the events that we're putting on because they're just badass, awesome festivals. And like, it's just a great time and it has its own sort of guiding light or is the guiding light even that different when you look at those events like Wadapalooza compared to Grand Games or West Coast Classic? It's a really good question, right? And um, I think, you know, as a, an organization that would program a test to get the right people to the world championship to possibly win. I think that has to be something that's in your mind when you're programming. Right? And, I, and I don't do the programming. I have people that are really good at it. Dylan is amazing at it. He's got a lot of support um, when he needs it from people that can give him perspective. But um, I, I put his programming up against anybody's in the business really. And, you know, he's good at that. You know, he knows, you know, being very aware of what, you know, the space you're in what you're you know, trying to accomplish has got to be a primary focus of, you know, how you build, you know, and what you build around. So for the, you know, Granite Games and West Coast Classic, you know, we're, um, you don't want to be the one that, you know, you, you got to build a test to get the world championship to the world champion to the world championship, right? Because in the end, it's about finding the fittest person in the world. And it's, um, you know, at an event like Wadapalooza in January that isn't sending somebody to the games, are we still looking to, you know, build a challenging test? Of course, you know, that's an earning platform and it's going to be, you know, a massive prize for us this year. Um, you know, we're, we're always going to evolve there because, you know, our, our number one goal is to, to create those opportunities and professionalize this sport. Um, but, you know, there, you know, you're not as stressed about, you know, that balance it's 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 more of a showcase right you know you want a really good test because you know i mean you can look at the historic program there it's like it you know sometimes all the workouts are a lot a little shorter you know we're, we're putting 2500 athletes through a floor 
know, it's a little bit of a different set of circumstances, you know, there sometimes can't be as much balance at an event like that, that there would be that we're very, very aware of, and we have more to work with at an event like Granite Games in West Coast Classic. But yeah, it's such a great question. Um, we want the right people to win always. Like we don't want to create a janky event that, you know, somebody backs into and gets a check for 50 grand at Wadapalooza or a hundred grand, whatever it ends up being. Right. Because those are like, big, big moments in people's lives. Um, you know, winning Wadapalooza now is a big deal for people. You know, that's a that's a big career accomplishment and a big financial gain. So that more and more probably starts to push more towards what we do with these events, you know? Um, there's a big responsibility on our side to make sure that the proper people that, you know, are, you know the, the, the test is, you know, properly rounded so that, you know, it, it, it expresses our sport properly. It's not, you know, that, you know, more of a, a niche that you know people can train specifically for let's talk a little bit about the prize purse because one of the things that i was uh i mean i was pretty vocally disappointed about the prize purse for semifinals i think in in general on paper it looks like it's the same because what it's the same payouts as 2018 regionals but in reality it's a it's a huge step backwards because the athletes are essentially forced to compete once and they can't do event after event after event if they want to, to try and earn a little bit more money. So it kind of limits the upside for a lot of the athletes, but that's just, that's just my take on things. I'm curious yeah. what your perspective is on the prize person. If you guys, if you guys had any clarity as to that's what was going to end up happening with the semifinals. Yeah, I think it was, it was a point. Um, it was obviously a point in, in all of this because we, we had big prize purses in those two events. You know, I think, we probably were going to aggregate, you know, 600 plus thousand dollars between those two events in 2020. Um, and it's a big deal that that's not in the system because it's not like that's going to appear somewhere else. Right. You know, um, we can't, you know, you essentially can't, um, how that looks moving forward. I'm, I'm really interested to, to be, uh, you know, involved in a big conversation about that. Um, because you know, I, um, I'd agree. I, I wouldn't, even classify it as I'd kind of agree. I do agree like that. Um, the prize money for uh, semifinals has to be more, you know, we have to uh, build a system that's sustainable. Um, and, I, and I believe that, you know, everybody's pointed in that North. It's a very unique year. Um, it's hard to do. I think what we probably all wanted to do more of this year on that side, um, you know, and, and CrossFit was in control of that this year. But again, you know, you can imagine, because I can speak to my experience with the event, you know, you need to produce revenue to be able to produce those things, right? You know, and this isn't a, a year that, um, you know, any of us were building our budgets around anything, but just trying to not lose money, you know? Um, and, you know, and, and if you did just a little, right? So I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It, it was a, probably a hard decision for them too. And we've had many discussions since that came out. Um, that was the first time I had seen it or any of us as organiz organizers had seen it. it. wasn't something that we had any control of, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not just, you know, disappointed in anybody specifically, but you know, the system, like we've got to find ways for, um, you know, that to be more money you know, this is a professional sport that, you know, we want our stars to be able to train full time, you know, and, you know, you, you look at new guys like Jason Hopper, won mid Atlantic, like he's a full-time job, you know, and he couldn't, you know, quit his job because of winning the mid Atlantic, you know? And so, you know, is that, um, that's, I, that's why, that's where, it, like, that's where it like sticks out. Right. Cause it's like, you look at him and it's like, okay, well he just beat the strongest field in the semifinals. You know, um, is that going to affect his games, you know, ability because he can't train more than a couple hours a day, right? So, um, you know, that's a big goal of mine. You know that. We've talked a lot about it. Like, you know, athletes earning, because I, I think, you know, I think a lot trickles off of that. But like, you know, us pushing the needle on what, what we're in control of towards athletes is a big priority of loud live sports and, and Matt O'Keefe personally. Um, and, you know, I, I really want to dig in on that because I think, um, you know, that's a big accomplishment to win a semifinal and get to the games. Um, so we need to find ways. We do We do need to find ways to, to, you know, to support that and grow that. And, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I saw a lot of great perspective this weekend. Um, 
and I don't think sometimes the community, you know, um, measures their role in these things. And, and again, it's a lot to ask of people um, to come out or like, you know, in hundred degree heat or like when they're still unsure on the pandemic, but you know, that's right. That, you know, the games is coming up, you know, um, they've announced it, you know, Dave's talked about it on the broadcast. It's 60% sold. Like that needs to be hundred percent sold and it should be right. Um, you know, I get it if people are nervous, you know, because they haven't been vaccinated, but, um, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, some of the pundits don't attend, you know, I'm not saying you do, you support and you're putting media, out, but it's, you know, the answer to some of that is, um, we can be more critical of things if they don't evolve, if, um, if everything is growing and, and evolving around it. Right. You know, and, and so, you know, all those things factor in, you know, and, 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 and the pandemic's had a, a monumental effect on our ability to function as a business unit this year. But yeah, I, I expect more from that and, and want more moving forward. And I, and, and I, and I want to be a part of that. It will be those conversations because we do need to evolve i couldn't agree with you more i agree on and understand the perspective and frustration from the athletes feel that a lot of phone calls on it and um you know i think it was a it was disappointing to them because they you know were you know a lot of things were changing and evolving and i think they felt like that was a big step back so um we got to get there like that has to move um and next year we'll tell a big story on that do you do you see the relationship between HQ and, and the semifinal events becoming more collaborative over time? Because like, you know, you, you and Loud and Live in your events have been able to pull up just between the events that you guys had scheduled for last year, a larger prize purse than the entirety of the semifinals put together. And that's just a handful of events that you're looking at. So, you know, clearly you have an idea of how this can work and be sustainable, profitable, functional for everybody involved, like the layers down the line. You know, I, I imagine if CrossFit's behavior is about where I suspect it is, which is similar to where it was three or four years ago, as opposed to similar to where it was last year, it's like less of a, hey, come on over, tell me what you were doing. Let me figure out what I can learn from you. And more of like, we've got this, you guys are playing the game that we're setting ourselves up. And you should be happy that you're you're participating as much as you are type situation. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that's a you know, there's been a lot more collaboration, um, and I want more, and 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 I think that's the, um, I think that's you know something that I think Eric uh, culturally is building, um, and I want you know, and and that needs to evolve because I I don't you know just like I would say I don't have all the answers and I can learn a lot from you know, people there, I think that there's the, the, the inverse is true too, right? Like there's a lot of things that I think we do well um, that I think could help too. And, and there's been, you know, way more conversation um, this year than ever. Um, and, it, and it has been less than I think how you characterized it, honestly. There's, there's a lot of new players on the partnership side. Um, we talk a lot and uh, they're referring things to athletes. That's a first. Um, you know, they're referring things to our events, you know, so th there, there is more. And again, that spells some of the tough year, right? There's, you know, but it's bubbling really quick. And I think we can do great things together um, because in the end, right? Like, I think we've found a really good and, and somewhat sometimes unique way to, to do a really good job for our partners. And it's why I think we can do what we do across all our platforms and people believe in and want to invest in that, which is really what we're required to do what we're talking about and, and it's it's forward and you know that to athletes professionalize the sport um you know i i I've, I've been noisy and will be continue to be noisy on that because i i think it's um you know again i don't think i have all the answers but we've certainly been able to do things better and differently than a lot a lot in you know if measuring if your measuring stick is like how it looks we do a really good job but if it's you know, there's like, you know, a number attached to it. Well, you know, we gave, you know, a million two in prize money last year. Like that's a real, that's, a, that's a real amount of money. Right. Um, if we had executed those five events. So it's, um, it's, um, you know, something that, 
you know, at least, you know, all in our group of semifinals too. I think a lot of people want to, you know, want to get there like that. You know, that's the one thing that I think is like very consistent in that group is um, it doesn't matter who it is. Like they want to hand a check to an athlete for a lot of money and, and, and know that like, cause we know what that means. You know, it's a, it's, it's a life changing event and, you know, um, they're buying homes and like, I get a lot of like, you know, quitting jobs, you know? So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, we got to get better. Like, honestly, like, and I, and I want to be, um, involved in that. And uh, it's, it, what, what has been good is like, you know, you can pick the phone up right now and say this, right. Like, it's just like, Hey, we got to get better at this. And it's like, yep, you're right. Like, you know, then, then the experience will dictate whether that was received or not. Right. And there's been a lot more collaboration. You know? There really has. Um, so we need to be a lot more, but, you know, we're getting, we're, we're starting to go in the right direction in a really good way. I, I know that for me, and I know for a lot of people uh, who are like in that space, in this part of the space, when something happens or there's a question or there's like a complaint or there's like a, a sort of like something needs to be clarified on the athlete or organizer or brand side of things, like, I reach out to you. I think a lot of people do too. I can only imagine what like your Rolodex is looking like. You pick up a phone, a phone call and it's like, you know, uh, you know, God knows whatever issues or, or someone else's fires or someone else's questions. So like clearly Matt O'Keefe, you, you have a role, like a, a, a sort of like a position in this space. And I'm, I'm wondering like, did you ever, did you ever think about, you know what, maybe we should, we should buy CrossFit. Like maybe we should own this thing. Maybe we should run this thing, or maybe we should come at them with some sort of like proposal on spin off the games and let us manage it or run it. Yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah. I mean, I think if you like look back to this time last year, I think probably emotionally everybody was like, you know, how do I, you know, get involved to sustain this and like, really um you know f you know help fix the problems and make sure we don't evaporate and go away right um you know in the end i will tell you that like you know we're 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 an athlete first business and and, and i feel like yeah like could i have done a good job with that and you know um I, I just my aspirations were never to you know run the crossfit games or you know own crossfit um you know, I don't know how that would have melded and blended with what I, what, what I'm most passionate about, you know, and, and, it, and in the end, I think, you know, no matter what delusions or, you know, thoughts were floating around at the time, they're all still pointed towards that, right? Like, so I think at the time, yeah, like I was, you know, hey, um, I love this sport. I see a huge future for it. Um, I, I don't want it to die, right? And so, yeah, like, hey, how can I find somebody to invest or you know, I think a lot of people thought like that, you know, to, to try to help, um, today, like I, I love my role, you know, I, I really do. And, um, I like where we sit. Um, you know, I like how we operate as an organization and I like what our North is, you know, and, and, um, and, and, and there, you know, not to say that that isn't something that, you know, um, uh, is in, uh, the priority, you know, category of CrossFit, but, you know, our number one priority is, is, you know, sport and athletes you know our athletes and creating opportunities for them to earn um you know and supporting brands and you know i love that side i like being on the brand side i like being on the athlete side so um i think you know maybe quick thoughts but honestly um you know it really made me double down on what i'm most passionate about right and which is is this side of it and we've gotten more involved with brands more involved with athletes and more passionate about what we do on the event side and how we really create a sustainable ecosystem, you know, because it's still volatile. Um, so yeah, it, it, it really is. A, it, it's a really good question. And I got it quite a bit. Um, but I think I'm right where I should be. Um, and, 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 I, and I really am grateful for where I'm at because I have a lot of cool people that I get to work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's never, it's never a day of work really. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, and I appreciate that you would think that much of me for that side of it. Um, but, um, you know, I, I like, I like where I'm at. I really do. And, and, and no matter how delusional that, you know, I might've gotten in the, all the chaos, I'm really, you know, fortunate that I, you know, was able to really sit down and get back to what, you know, really is important to me. 
uh, last thing here, because I know you're a busy guy and I've been talking to you for so long here. Do you think, do you <laughs> feel like uh, we're, we're better off and moving in the right direction than we were, you know, like three years, two years, one year ago. I mean, the one year one is a pretty easy answer considering where we were one year ago, but you know what I mean? I want to meet, I want to meet the guy that would say no. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be the most like jaded, cynical, <laughs> broken human being on the face of the planet. If they were like, you know what, in, in June of 2020, CrossFit was in a better place than it is right now. That would be so sad. Oh, that would be so sad. It's, um, yeah, I mean, we are, we're in a, a really, a monumentally better place than, than I've ever seen our space. And, and, and I would say that is, um, in a lot of different facets, you know, which, and I think is all contributed from like more stability and confidence, you know, certainly at the helm, right? Like in, 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 um, and then sort of the the cultural shift too in those that have stuck around and and, and and how they've adopted that right but i've seen you know i've net you know it's really funny and, and mostly in the last couple of months you know even on the brand side like things are great people are thriving you know people are back and like it's a it's a you know a market that you know i think a lot of people were pent up there was a lot of pent up demand and, and um so um yeah i mean funny a year ago i don't think i would have been saying this right now today but you know um we've grown you know we're evolving and what we're really fortunate uh, you know for is that you know eric bought the business and there's an entirely new structure and approach moving forward that i think helps everybody that's involved um some of us have less patience than others you or me with certain things um which is okay, but you know, one of the greatest pieces of that for me is that those are conversations now. There's not a lot of fear around expressing that like there were in the past. There's just so many micro pieces that, you know, I don't really lose a whole lot of sleep about, you know, the fact that I'm passionate about this thing growing and people I love that wanting to be successful. You know, two, two, three years ago, like even expressing that was something that I had to be cautious about, you know, and that, that's not the case anymore. I mean, these interviews would have been far different. You know, you and I talk, and I mean, you are always great about that. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm grateful for that and appreciative of it. But it was harder for guys like me to even, you know, you talk about the prize money thing. Like I would have just been like, no comment two years ago, you know, like, you know that. And, you know, that's helped. Those things don't seem you know, they seem normal because they are, and they should always be that way. But those have helped because uh, one thing that hasn't changed is, you know, people want to watch this. People want to do this. And training is the most um, evergreen sport there is in the world, right? Like it's, it's uh, everybody trains for something and being the sport of training and the sport of fitness has a massive global role, you know, and, and there's so much more there if we want it. And, and we all point in that same direction. You know, I've been singing this to, to I'm hoarse, just that, you know, people like, you know, we, we work on the marketing side of this. Like people don't, people want to watch LeBron James work out more than they want to watch him or can relate more to his workouts than they can to him shooting threes and dunking. Right. So it's, um, it's just, um, and we're, we're the face of that. Right. And, you know, we're the inspiration and aspiration on that, you know, with athletes, and, you know, our platform. So things are going really well. Um, you know, I'm impatiently patient. You know, I really want things to evolve faster in what we do and what we all do together. Uh, but I think that, you know, sort of drive that I have and others do that, that run alongside me and us and, and in this space will get us where we want to get, you know. And people like you are still here doing this and contributing, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, we just, you know, all do our part, all show up and, you know, continue to, to, to promote. I think we'll get where we want to get. And we are really fortunate we've got um we've got a you know we've got a very different look and feel from you know the leadership now and, and it's um it's it's you know i'm optimistic good man i'm happy to hear that i i, I love hearing that you're optimistic i love seeing that you guys are are you know, being able to create the things that you want to create and that it's it's putting you in a position where you have some like long-term goals that you can actually check off the list and, and succeed in really cool ways. Because at the end of the day, that's like the ecosystem has to flourish. You can't have 
one or two pieces of the ecosystem like rotting away and expect the rest of it to be fine. It, it has to exist and, and survive and thrive all together. Um, so I, I think it's really important, uh, the types of things that you're doing, the, the sort of like model that you're setting for the other events and for, you know, between just like the management side of things that you started off with to the event side of things to the competition side of things. I think that that model is really important for people to, people to be able to see and for people to hear you say that you're optimistic and you're happy about how things are progressing and that things are progressing is probably going to be a really big, um, a really big boon for, for a lot of people in systems. So it, it makes me happy to hear that too. Yeah. It's um, we all have to do our part too. Like, I think it's, um, you know, solutions are what it's about. Right. And, 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 and I feel like there's more welcomeness to that in general, but it's, you know, um, you know, if my event sucks, great. I want to hear about it, but like, you know, help me get it better, you know, make it better. Like, you know, tell me it sucks. Doesn't help me, you know, um, you know, and that's remedial, but it's like, you know, and I love that, you know, and a lot of people have given good perspective on it. It was like, you know, people looked at the attendance at Granite Games and they're like, man, community's got to support these events was the perspective out of that. If they want them to be there and thrive and they're right, you know, uh, we're fine. You know, like we got through that event, um, you know, and we're good operators. So we were able to, but I think we could have provided a better experience for everybody involved if more people show up. Right. You know, cause, cause what I, what I think that like sometimes the perception becomes of like business units like ours, particularly, there's a lot of community-based business units, right. Gym owners that are running a competition, you know, we sort of stick out in that, you know, I've been a part of the community as long as any of them. Um, I'm just not a gym owner. Right. But I would say that, um, you know, we don't like, you know, I'm not, you know, we don't operate, you know, you know, as skinny as possible. And like, it's not, this isn't for me, the profit in this is, you know, um, really, you know, the reward for me is people's experience, you know, yeah. Are we a for-profit organization? Sure. Um, but that's not, you know, we don't run our organization like that. And I think that's what then brings value to your organization and helps you grow in the long haul. But I promise you right now, and we're in growth mode and we forward invest in everything we do. Um, you know, if, if, if I'm making a lot of money, I'm not doing a good job because we have so much growth to be had and we have to push it back towards this community and athletes. If we're not doing that, we're failing and we need people to support, you know, um, and, and everybody knows that, right. You know, I'm not begging for that. Like people come, if you want to come, if you don't, don't. Right. But it's, um, you know, like, being everybody else's north, you know, whether you're a fan, a volunteer, you know, an athlete, um, bring solutions, you know, like, let's work together, let's collaborate, let's grow, because I want to pay you all like more as athletes. And, you know, I want the, the volunteer experience to be even more premium than it is. And you know, I want my partners to make a lot of money. You know? And so those things are most important to me. And, um, you know, so, what, you know, you know, you bring solutions, I bring solutions, if everybody sort of has that mindset, we'll get where we need to get. This sport is like 15 years old now. Most of them live and die very quickly, right? We're, we're past that phase. It's real. Um, but, you know, you know, these critical years, these next few years are, you know, register for the open, come participate at these events, spectate them. Um, you know, if there's things you don't like, give good positive feedback, show up and volunteer. If you don't like how something looked, you know, judging or whatever it is, we'll judge, you know? because we're a, a new sport. We need people that are good at all of those things. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's a, it's a particularly, you know, critical crowd at times, which I love cause it's passion, but it's also, you know, um, I love a lot of the review the last couple of weeks, particularly from, you know, people like yourself where it's like, Hey, we, you know, let's step up, you know, um, we all, we all need that. Like, Hey, listen, I, I don't have anything to do with the games other than I have athletes at it. We need people to show up for the CrossFit games. You know, um, it's it's full capacity. We need to sell that venue out. You know, let's sell the CrossFit Games out. People who are local there, it's a great opportunity. It's at a really cool value. Um, and we can't, you know, go to a 60 or 70% full stadium. I think it's going to sell out anyway, but I'm not going to sit back and hope that happens. I want to speak my piece. Show up. Support it. You want athletes to get paid more money? Go to the games. You know, support brands. That's how it happens. Love it. You heard it from the chief himself. Support your local competitions and support your global competitions. Uh, O'Keefe, thanks, man. It's great talking to you. Always, dude. We got to do it more often. 
we this like, we, we didn't do it under duress this time this was good so, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it's like we're, we're having a conversation without everything on fire around us isn't that nice uh, you're you're in la now so i expect you to take a short ride to las vegas next weekend and come hang out with me i wish i wish katie is uh katie's 36 weeks pregnant so we are in the home stretch and i am going to be staying right by her side good for you well that's the time of your life congrats i'm happy for you thank you thank you we're really excited it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time and uh you know i'm i am bummed that i'm not gonna be able to make it so is she because she was like she's had such a great time traveling with me to some of these events over the past couple of years so uh yeah we're both looking forward to being able to do that again uh hopefully soon and maybe drag along a newborn who knows do it i love it thanks man it's well, good the, talking the, to you. the newborn the, new, the newborn will ask me far easier questions than you oh probably probably yeah. but they'll be more demanding they'll just ask easier yeah. questions but they'll be more demanding <laughs> uh, thanks for thanks thanks for having me dude it's always a pleasure